you've got a Bible or you're sitting beside somebody that does have one. Phones do not count. We want Bibles in here. Amen. You'll never keep up with this with a phone. It, you, you need to go to the doctor and have a phonectomy, a bunch of y'all do. It's grow to part, be a part of your body. Uh, Dylan's going to come and sing, and then we're going to get right and started. Here he is. Now, this is a surprise to you. I mean, this is a surprise. I didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know he could talk, let alone sing. I've only heard him say two words since I've known him. I do. Uh, he, he's a very quiet man, and, and that's admirable. That's an admirable quality. Uh, but I didn't know he could sing. They kept saying, Dylan can sing. I said, he can't. You know what he told me? So uh, he's, he's going to have one ready for us, then we're going to get right in our scripture. So be getting your Bibles out. Have them ready. Uh, I'll need um, uh, somebody to help me back there with the lights there in a minute, just for a very short minute. Uh, and then it won't, it won't take but a second, and I'll have him back home. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. As they've only been married now. How long y'all been married now? About six months. Six months already. Lord have mercy. All right. Go ahead, brother. All right. Well, I've been beat and I've been laughed at And I've been drugged through the streets of pain And all the hurtful things you've done to me You know my love has never changed Well, I felt loneliness and hunger And I felt helpless and betrayed And all the hurtful things you've done to me You know my love has never changed You drove the nails through my hands I never gave up on you You place the thorns on my head But I'm right here with you I'm here with you Well, I took the sting of torture So you wouldn't feel the pain Well I was nailed upon a cross for you And child I'd do it all again You drove the nails through my hands I never gave up on you You place the thorns on my head But I'm right here with you I'm here with you Amen Amen Amen, brother. Thank you. Go that say amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. What the Lord went through for us. Greater love, the Bible says, Hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now we're ready to start. Um, I, let's do this tonight. Now, we're, we're going down deep tonight. We'll come up for air a couple of times. Maybe everybody will come out at the end of this all right. Uh, but we're fixing to go into some deep waters this evening. I want to begin tonight with um, the book of... Uh, 
Colossians chapter number 2. The book of Colossians chapter number 2. And then I'm going to go all over the place tonight, so keep your Bibles handy. You, will, you probably will need, let's, let's change that. Go to uh, Hebrews chapter 1, I'm sorry. I'll go back to Colossians in a minute. Hebrews chapter number 1, and um, I want to uh, read this verse, and we'll begin in Hebrews 1. Then we're going to go all over the place, so you keep your Bibles open and be ready for this tonight. We're studying about the seven classes of life in the universe, and last week we got the first two, which was animals, creatures, and mankind. Tonight we get the third one, and it's angels. Hebrews chapter number one, uh, chapter two, and look at uh, verse number um, five. Hebrews chapter two and verse five. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Look at verse chapter 1 and verse 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. And then look at verse 14 of chapter 1. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. This is going to be a short, condensed overview of the subject of angels in the Bible. 285 times, at least, in the Bible, angels are mentioned. That word angle, like angle, angle, that word England, same thing. It is the English word like angle, that's where England come from, and it's like an angle, Angeles, Los Angeles, city of angels. Except that Los Angeles is not the city of God's angels. That's the fallen ones. You can count, you can mark that down. It's no accident they named it Los Angeles. The Greek is Angeles, and English is angle, uh, or again, Anglo Saxon. Words like that. And the word itself uh, means a messenger. Uh, and that's just part of it. Tonight, we're going to look at it, and I'm going to give you some uh, uh, fact. All them two on your far right there, above, just the two on the far right, above and below, Eric. And I'm just going to show you, uh, if you saw an angel uh, tonight in the Bible, uh, I, this is not an angel, uh, that's what it looked like in the Bible. In the Bible, if you saw an angel, it would look like that or similar to it. And I'm going to get back. Oh, me help me out, Brother Eric. Uh, um, and keep that picture in mind tonight. And I'm going to give you, first of all, some facts about angels. If you can see that, it looks like a young man about 30, 33 probably years of age and with a sword drawn, that was a lot what they did in the Bible, all right, now you can crank them back up, now that being said, I want to stop, uh, start this evening by giving you some facts, now you got to listen fast because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move fast, first of all, what are they, the Bible said they are ministering spirits sent forth to be heirs of them that are heirs of salvation, uh, number two, how many angels are there? There are literally millions and millions of them. You get that from uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. The Bible said there is an innumerable. That means you can't count them. Uh, they, God knows how many they are, but a human couldn't count them. There are so many. Innumerable number of angels. There is one angel in the Bible that is called an ark angel. Many people get that wrong. They say, isn't Gabriel an archangel and Michael an archangel? No. Only one angel in the Bible is called an archangel. That is Michael. The Gabriel is named. There's only two of those um, actually named in the Bible, Michael and Gabriel. 
uh, some literature, they say like the book of Enoch, some stuff like that that's not scripture, gives names to a few more. And then there are, is one angel special in the bottomless pit in the book of Revelation chapter number 9 called Apollyon. So there's one with a name. And he is over the bottomless pit. And then there are specific four angels bound under the river Euphrates. Under the river, in the river Euphrates. And their spirit, they will be loose from there in the, in, the, uh, in the tribulation period in Revelation chapter, uh, I think, number 9, along in there. Now, those four angels, have called, uh, that's, that's who Charles Manson thought the Beatles, he thought that was the Beatles, uh, the four angels that come out of the pit uh, during the tribulation. They, he probably wasn't off too bad, uh, but uh, they were definitely uh, uh, pictures, uh, the Beatles were, of those angels coming out of the pit. Next, what does an angel look like? They look like just like you saw up there a minute ago. They appear as a young male, like any other ordinary man. If an angel from heaven walked in that door right there tonight, he would look like one of the young men in here, about 33 years of age. That is completely contrary to what the, the world thinks. I think Michael Landon and Heaven Can Wait got it right. Uh, there, but I never watched that, but I remember uh, people talking about it when he was supposed to have been one hunting something to do down here. Uh, but uh, uh, they appear as an ordinary man. There are no female angels. Did you hear me? There are no female angels. All these pictures where you see these beautiful blonde-headed women and with big old wings that angels in the Bible neither are female and do not have wings. Not one angel in the Bible have wings. They get that by confusing them because they can fly. They can fly. And they get it confused with cherubim and seraphim that do have wings. But that's a complete separate creature. We'll study them, Lord willing, next week. Uh, and they, uh, uh, the Bible said that some have entertained angels unawares. Over there in Hebrew, that means there have been people who have met angels and didn't even know they're angels. Now, come on, people. You mean to tell me if something knocked on your door and you opened it up and there was a six-foot-two blonde-headed woman with big wings, you, you wouldn't mistake that for something besides a normal person? You couldn't entertain that unawares. Uh, no. No, they are not little naked babies floating around with bows and arrows uh, shooting people and making them fall in love. That is not a picture of, of uh, an angel in the Bible. I'll tell you what they were in the Bible. In Genesis 19, they came to Sodom, and the men of Sodom, the homosexuals in Sodom, were so evil and so wicked that they were trying to get with these men and mate with them. So they were a man. They were a man, just like me. Hands, nose, feet, all the features of a man. In Genesis 18, they ate so they can eat. They have a physical body, and they ate steak there with Abraham, whatever they fixed for him there, and, uh, and uh, Lot's bread that Lot fixed for them. Now, every time you start saying that, you hear a roar of opposition. When the lady said, why are you always making it sexist? I'm not making it anything. I'm telling you what to buy. Our theme is Bible preaching. You want the Bible? You're going to get it here. Amen? And if you don't like the Bible, all I can tell you is stick your fist up there and see what good it does you. I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. One lady said, well, it's just not fair. It's just not fair. Why do they ought to be men? Why, why can't they make a movie where God is a female? I go, want to make a movie where the devil's a female. They don't want to do that, do they? Have you ever seen? <laughs> you know what? They hate men. That's, anytime a woman does that, she hates men. And they got a problem. But anyway, I'm going to tell you where there were men in the Bible. Y'all, are you listening? Now, you got to listen fast. Judges, chapter 13, verses 2 to 21. The angel, a man just like me, appeared to Manoah. Balaam, in Numbers chapter 22 and verse 22, appeared to Gideon. Uh, uh, Balaam there. To Gideon, in Judges chapter 6 and verse 11, a man. Hagar, in Genesis 16, a man. 
angel. Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 and verse 24. Uh, the angel that come to destroy Israel in 1 Chronicles 2.16 was a male angel. The angel that rolled the stone away when Jesus rose from the dead in Matthew 28 and verse 2 to 6 was uh, the angel there, a male. Gabriel, who announced his first coming uh, in, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 11, was a male angel. That's where they're going to get, that's where they get, uh, Gabriel's going to blow the horn when the second coming because Gabriel heralded the first coming. That may be right. The old preacher said, Gabriel's going to toot and we're going to scoot. I don't know if that's right or not, but he announced the first coming. It may be that he announces the second coming. It was a male angel, man, that loosed Peter from prison in Acts chapter 12, verse 6 to 10. Is a male angel, Michael, in Jude chapter 1 and verse 9, and also Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And that binds the devil and casts him into the bottomless pit, a male angel with a great chain in his hand, not her, Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 3. You can entertain an angel without knowing it. That's another proof that they look just like us. All the stories and books and movies and Hollywood counterfeits touched by an angel, you know, uh, Charlie's Angels. Uh, they missed that one there just a tad. Uh, and uh, they, they were not, they wasn't angels, not the right kind anyway. Uh, it was a Hollywood counterfeit. Now, another thing about angels, angels are very powerful. In 2 Kings 19 and verse 35, there was an angel killed 185 thousand men in one night of the wicked Assyrian army. You say, an angel wouldn't do that. Done did it, buddy. Uh, done did it. I've heard people say, God wouldn't kill nobody. He sure has. God's killed a lot of people. Uh, don't, don't, you, know, you, know, you, read, you read the Bible? Do you read the Bible? Uh, the Bible said, oh, there was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Sure, sure enough. So one angel. Now, sometimes in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord is a pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's very evident by the way he talked to people. Uh, uh, and we'll, we'll have to get into that some other time. There's not a, like I said, a little baby fly, floating around. Uh, they are very, very powerful. Uh, the angels in the Bible, uh, many times was even the Lord himself. Like when they come to Sodom, there was three of them. And he talked to, talked to Lot there and everything. And then the Lord went on back to heaven or wherever he went to. And two of them came to Sodom and even in chapter 19. So uh, the Lord was one of them angels. Not only that, they are fast. They can fly. They can transport from wherever God lives in the third heaven here just like that. They can materialize and immaterialize, vanish and appear at will when God sends them on a mission for a message. Not only that, they're extremely wise. They have wisdom far beyond any, any of us that are a, a normal human being have. In Daniel chapter 10, where the angel come and touched him and said, I've come and give you wisdom and knowledge uh, far beyond what you could ever discover on your own. They are not to be worshipped. You do not worship angels. Every time in the Bible when somebody fell down to worship an angel, they said, get up, worship God. Get up, worship God. I'm telling you tonight, no angel deserves worship. If an angel come in that door right there and we knew it was an angel, we'd say, look, if you got a message from God to us, we're ready to listen, but I would not fall down and worship him. That's not the Lord. That's one of the Lord's angels. Angels are not to be worshipped. And then, uh, I'll tell you something else. They, they dispense sword, pestilence, plagues, and and uh, punishment on nations and groups. Uh, they can wipe out an army. They can do all kinds of things and send plagues and, and punishment upon the uh, uh, groups of people that sin. They watch over little children. Now, I, I know that's, that's controversial, and a lot of people uh, don't, don't know about that. You know, you hear all these stories about uh, the little children's guardian angel, and you hear all these, I mean, everybody here has seen them pictures where that little boy and girl's walking through the woods, and the bridge is broke. You ever seen that? It's, a, it's everywhere. And an angel's got his hand down there holding it up. How many you ever seen that? It's everywhere. You see it. It's all over bookstores and everything. I don't know about all of that, but I will tell you what the Bible says. The Bible said in Matthew chapter number 18, 
13 and verse 10, Jesus said, talking about these little children, he said, their angels always uh, behold the face of their father which is in heaven. That sounds like that little kids have an angel that represents them in heaven and watch other. I don't know that, but that's what Jesus said. Uh, I don't know how far that goes in protecting them and watching over them. If you've ever had a two-year-old or a three-year-old, you know somebody's got to be watching after them. Ain't that right? Uh, a lot of times uh, because it's unbelievable what they can get into just like that. And then churches have angels. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 3, he said to the angel of the church, right, to the angel of the church, right, to the angel of the church, right. And I know preachers everywhere preach that is the pastor, but it don't say pastor, it says angels. And I personally prefer to stick with what it said. Every church, a real church, has a, has a uh, and the Lord could have said pastor, right? There. He could have said to the elders of the church, but he said angel. So we'll leave it like it said. And then another thing about angels, we're gonna help judge them one of these days. That's a weird thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Because what they got now is an angel is a ministering spirit but has a body but no soul and no blood. So an angel, if when they appeared in the Old Testament in the Bible, they appeared just like a man, made just like a man, talked just like a man, but their spirit and no soul, and they didn't have blood. And now we're fixing to get into the hard part. Fallen angels. What are fallen angels? Where'd they come from? How'd they get that way? What are they doing now? What are demons? Where'd demons come from? And stuff like that. I do not claim to have all the answers. Some of this, about maybe 10% of it, may be my opinion, and I'll tell you when it is, and throw it in. You can accept it or not. But where, it, where it's Scripture, I trust that you would. Fallen angels. Now, to, to realize fallen angels, you've got to realize that the devil had angels and has angels. And, and the devil that, that had the angels that followed him in his original rebellion against God. So when, when the devil rebelled against God, he took a bunch of them, a bunch, and they followed him, which means they have choice. Uh, they have choice, and they, they uh, followed Satan and become part of the rebellion. You say, Brother Danny, has the devil really got angels? Do you know in Matthew 25, 41, you know what your Savior Jesus Christ said? He said a long time ago that hell was created for the devil and his angels. That devil has angels. Amen. And he has angels that rebelled then. And he's got more that's going to follow him out in the tribulation in Revelation chapter number 12. In Revelation 12, 9, they will be cast out uh, of heaven, uh, the, the first heaven. And so they are not all locked up. For years, it used to bother me when I'd read that scripture where it said, God spared not the angels at sin, but cast them down hell. And I thought, well, well, if, if, they, if, the devil, if they're out here running around, they need demon spirits and everything, how come it says there they're locked up? There's some of them that are locked up. Now, listen carefully what I'm, what I'm getting ready to say. Some of it, the devil's angels are already in prison. Jude, verse 6, and the angels which kept not their first estate. He's reserved in chains of darkness unto that, unto that day when the Lord throws them in hell in the lake of fire. It says the same thing in 2 Peter 2 where it said, God spared not the angels that sinned. So this, the context there is the days right before the flood. So the angels that sinned before the flood with women are the ones that God has in chains of darkness to be reserved under the judgment day. Now, let's talk about this thing of Satan getting cast out of heaven for a minute. I've heard people for years and years say, uh, Preacher, how did Satan get cast out of heaven and when was it and how come it says he's going to do it again? Here it is. It is five 
Four. Actually, Satan goes down five times. Five, the number of death in the Bible. You can listen to a lot of softy soap preachers and they give it grace and you can make a case for that, but there's a lot more case for death. Number five, uh, the first man that ever died, the uh, first man that ever lived on earth died in Genesis 5, 5. Uh, the death, D-E-A-T-H, Jesus, fifth rib, punt at his death. Uh, the, the, uh, all the, May, when a ship goes down, when ter- May Day, January, February, March, April, May. Number five, we got five fingers, five toes, uh, unless you're one of them Nephilim people and they got six. Uh, some of them, we'll talk about that later. Uh, they sure do. I got pictures of them. And the, um, the, in Revelation 12, verse 9, it said the devil will be cast out again. So it went like this. Isaiah 14, the Lord said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, uh, forever? Now, he was above the throne. The Bible said that the devil was the fifth, number five, cherub. And that cherub covered the throne. There's five of them. You know how many they are in the book of Revelation now? Four. The fifth one fell, the reptilian class. All the other classes represented there, the cows, the man, all that is represented in Revelation, but the uh, reptilian class ain't. And uh, it's gone. It became Satan. So when the devil fell in, Revela- in, in, uh, in the Old Testament, God cast him down. Listen to me. God cast him from out of heaven. He said, I'll be like the Most High. I'm going to be like him. As a matter of fact, I want to be God. And the, and the God said, no, you're not. Bam. And the fifth cherub was cast out and his angels with him down to the second heaven. That's up yonder in the stars and the planets. That's what they call in the Bible high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and, and wick, spiritual wickedness in high places. And then Jesus, when he was here, said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's going from the second heaven to the first. That's where the second heaven is. You know in the Bible there's three heavens, right? Everybody understand that. There's three heavens. The first one, you you can walk out there and see it right now. It's daylight. Right up there above you can see clouds. Birds fly in the first heaven. You see the second heaven by night. You go out there and see the stars, the planet, that's second heaven. And there you see the first one by day, second one by night, the third one by faith. That's the third heaven. There's a land that's fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. So he went down from the third heaven to the second. Then he went down from the second to the first. In the tribulation period, the Lord's going to cast him down from the first heaven to the earth. That's why all hell's going to break loose on this earth during the tribulation period. There's going to be hell on earth, people, because the devil has come down having great wrath because he knows he's got a short time. Well, that's about three years when that happens. Uh, uh, the last of the great tribulation. At the end of the tribulation comes number four. He's cast into the bottomless pit or the the pit for 1,000 years. So at the beginning of the tribulation, the Lord, I mean the millennium, millennium means 1,000 years, mil, 1,000, annum, annual, 1,000 years. So the the devil is cast down in the the pit for 1,000 years and at the end of that 1,000 years, that's the fourth time he goes down, at the, at the end of that thousand years, he gets out, causes that rebellion against God there in the last couple of chapters of the book of Revelation, and then the fire comes down from heaven, burns them all up, and God throws them in the lake of fire. That's number five. So he goes down from the, the, the throne to the third heaven, from the third to the second. Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning. From the second uh, to, uh, to the first, and then from the first to the earth on the ground, and then from the earth to the, to the pit, and then from the pit to the lake of fire. That's how the devil goes. Now he's got angels and spirits that follow with him. Now I'm going to tell you about uh, spirits now, and I'm going to tell you what I think it looks like. I am not claiming 
that everything I'm getting ready to say is exactly right. But I've studied this for a good 35 years, off and on, and I can see it just as plain as day. You do not get a real education from a secular college or university. As a matter of fact, you'll be shocked to learn that a lot of what you were taught all your life ain't even right. Now, in the beginning, God made them all, all the spirits. Before Adam and Eve were here, the sons of God shouted for joy. That's in Job 38, verse 6 and 7. When God laid the foundation of the earth, the sons of God shouted for joy. This was before Adam. This was before Eve. Job, probably the oldest book in the world. The book of Job. That don't mean it happened first. That means it was written first. Now, Satan rebelled and took millions of angels. They became fallen angels with him. They became disembodied spirits. They could take on a body, but had no soul and no blood. Now, the Bible said they kept not their first estate. Now, that term, sons of God, is extremely interesting in the Bible. There's two people called a son of God and two different groups called sons of God. That's all there is in the Bible. One person is called a son of God is Adam. He was a son of God. Direct creation of God. The next was the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously, the only begotten Son of God. The other group called sons of God is this group I'm talking about right here. They were the angels that, that, that they fell and, be, and began to uh, roam and hunt for a place to live on this earth when they followed Satan. They are sons of of God. And the other group is you and I. We are sons of God. All four of them are a direct creation of God. Nobody in the Old Testament is sons of God in that sense except these creatures whatever they whatever they happen to be. Now, when these sons of God, Genesis 6, they were fallen angels, they were wicked. Extremely Wicked, I mean very wicked. They had a body, but no blood. They were looking for some way to cohabitate with women. And the Bible said in Genesis 6, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They saw beautiful women. And without, without being too plain, they cohabitated with these women. And that's where the giants and the men of renown came for, and that's why God had to wipe the whole uh, population out because those giants were the product of those fallen sons of God and the daughters of women. And they have, now, 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 some of y'all are sitting there saying, well, I ain't never heard such a man in my life. Just because you ain't never heard it don't mean it's right. And I strongly advise you, study it about 200 hours before you make a judgment like that. You might find out you don't know what you're talking about. The Schofield note has thrown the Baptist off for 150 years by saying it was the godly line of Seth and the ungodly line of, of, of Cain or somebody and said it was good men marrying bad women. And good men and bad women made giants. No, that's not true. You say, well, why don't it say daughters of God? They're all male. They were all male. So they, they took blood. And the only way they could reproduce is take blood. So when their body got blood, then they could reproduce and they produced a supernatural race. And that's where Dracula comes from. True. That thing right there. See that blood? All these old horror movies and all this stuff is based, it's a counterfeit of what that old King James Bible taught. Somehow or another, they got blood from humans, they got blood from animals. And they produced giants. 
Now, the giants that you read about in your Bible were after the flood. And well, they, were, they were even coming back after that. We'll, take, we'll talk about that maybe in a minute if I have time. But these giants, some of them, we're not talking about tall people. We're not talking about Robert Waddell or whatever his name was. You can see him on his... Uh, no, we're not talking about a freak of nature. Uh, most of the giants that people see now uh, when they're like uh, seven foot nine or something like that, they walk like this, you know, and they live to be about 38 and die. You know, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about just tall men. We're not talking about giant. We're, we're, we're talking about big. And I mean big. Uh, Goliath was one of the leftovers after the flood, and he was 10 feet tall, nine and a half. And Og, the king of Bashan, was 13 feet tall. We're talking 18, 20, 20 feet tall. There's bones all over this world to prove that. They don't put them in science books. And the reason they don't put it in science books because it contradicts evolution. They're God. But they're there. They're hid in the Smithsonian somewhere. Or they make a dinosaur out of them and claim that's Trishonosaurus or something like that. It's true. True. Now you take a man, listen to me, you take a man whose father is a fallen angel and whose mother is a woman and then, I mean, we're talking brother tall as that ceiling there, him and his wife, him and his wife, him and his wife. There were races of giants all over this world. There's evidence of it all over America. There's graves. It's all over the place. We'll study that pretty soon. You're talking to people that are three times as tall, eight times as strong, and ten times as intelligent. So, had an IQ of 800. A man with an IQ of 800, that's how they built them pyramids. You know they've never figured out how they're... Did you know there's blocks at Baalback? There are blocks right now. You can look at them. I, I, don't, know, I, I don't want to go many places, but I'd like to go there. I'd like to go there. If y'all want to do something for me for my 800th anniversary, uh, being it two more years, uh, yeah, Baalback. And you can go on these tours. There are blocks that are 1,600 tons. Square, smooth as that table right there. That's three million pounds, y'all. Stacked up on how how they stack them up? How they make a block six? If you say, well, those millions of slaves, why would they have done that when you can just make little blocks and build a big wall? <laughs> when you ever think about stuff, I think, well, why would they want to do that if they could have done it? They couldn't have done it. We don't have the equipment now to do that. I think the biggest crane now, I asked Todd, said, what's the biggest crane in the world? And I've asked two or three people, and they say the biggest crane in the world can lift, uh, can lift something like this, like a 1,000 tons, something like that, but it's over in some other country, and you have to have it all set up, and it takes days and everything. Them people didn't have no cranes, man. There's blocks, solid granite from here to the back wall back there, same size as a railroad car, stacked up on top of each other perfect. They did it. They did it. And that's how all that stuff happened. And they smell like sulfur. The same smell that comes when a person is demon possessed. The same smell that what you hear in all those movies were a rotten egg smell. I had a friend of mine down in South Carolina had uh, his kids, demon, come in and got his kids. And his, uh, his wife had been messing around with Ouija board and occult stuff, and she got saved. And he said every once in a while they'd come back, and they'd come in their room at night, and she said she could feel them. And he said, I could smell it. He didn't know none of this stuff. I said, what did it smell like? And he said, it's rotten eggs. And he said, one night we was laying in bed, and he said, they come in there, and they said, we're going to get you. And he said, I plead the blood of Jesus. You're not going to get us. And they said, we'll get your kids. And he said, our kids was laying in the living room floor asleep where they were going to sleep that night watching TV. And he said, we went in there, and our kids were just jerking all over the living room floor, turning around like that. He had no reason at all to make that up. Now, look, what they are when they're spirits. Now, when the flood came, you can look this up. In Psalm 82, verse 6 and 7, 
He said, I said, ye are gods, but ye shall die like men. So they died. Their body that they had drowned in the flood. Since they have no soul, them giants couldn't go to heaven or hell. And you couldn't have a race like that, so God wiped it out. But he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again in the coming of the days of the Son of Man. I don't know this, and I don't even know if I believe it, but I know people that do. They're saying that there may be people walking around here on this earth tonight that ain't all really completely normal people. I don't know if I believe that or not. Elon Musk and them, they're talking about right now merging your brain with a computer. That's iron and clay. That's another message. That's Daniel. That's a mingling. That's a mingling. They mingle their seed with men. That's a mingling of men and women. All, how come every movie, how every, you look it up, every comic book from back in the 50s and 60s is always a monster with this girl and she's hanging on, you know, and her clothes half off and she's hanging backwards like that and the monster's got her. Why is every one of them like that? Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast, King Kong. Dracula, Godzilla, everyone. It's always, it's always a monster and a woman, a monster and a woman, a monster and a woman. That's Hollywood's counterfeit of what's really going on in this world. Katy Perry sang about it exactly right. Her song, um, I think the name it's Alien or something like that, and she said, uh, looking for abduction, waiting to be abducted. You remember that song? I preached on it here one night. She said, you're an alien. Her boyfriend's an alien. She said, he has a different DNA. And she's wanting to be abducted. And wanting to, that's getting all the kids in America ready for a super race to come and impregnate them to produce a super race of people. She said, I ain't never in my life, Brother Danny. There's a lot in that old book besides be good to your neighbor, y'all. That old book right there is past, present, and future. So when the flood came, when the flood came, they drowned but their spirits are out roaming. So my opinion, that's where demons come from. My opinion is demons are the spirits of those millions of giants that died in the flood and their spirits are roaming because they, they don't have a soul for a body to inhabit. And they're looking for a body to get in. So a, an animal... His second choice, a person's first choice. You get in a person, that's what they want, but they can't get in a person. Like when the Jesus cast the pigs down the, I mean the demons out of the pig, uh, man, they went into pigs, and they jumped off down there and committed hogicide. That's the first time in the Bible you see devil ham. But, <laughs> but listen, they made it. They made it. And we laugh once in a while to keep them out of here. You start talking about it like like if they'll come in here. You, you laugh and cut up and have a good time in the Lord. They can't stand that. They're extra dimensional creatures now. Look up Easter Island. Easter, just like the Easter Island. They have statues that are humongous, this big, of these big faces, all that. All that stuff, there's a reason for all that stuff, y'all. Look up old, old Stephen, Stephen Quayle. Q-U-A-Y-L-E, Stephen Quayle, Genesis 6. Look at that. And I believe this before I ever even heard of that guy. But look at that when you get time. And they're going to do the same thing again. They have no soul, so they're looking for a body to possess. That's the fallen angels. Now the good angels, God's angels, are in heaven with the Lord and back and forth doing his bidding. The fallen angels are somewhere around doing the devil's work, trying to mess everything up, coming here and there and doing this and that. I don't claim to know the answer to all of it. And those spirits are everywhere. All right? I'm done. I'm turned off, Andy. Amen.